All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be discussing volume, not how loud your speakers get, but the scientific measurement of how much space an object occupies. So small objects take up a small volume, small amount of space. Large objects take up a large volume or a large amount of space. So we're talking about how much space something takes up. Very different than how heavy it is. If you really want to insult someone's mother, scientifically, you should tell them your mama has so much volume that she insert whatever your insult here is and you'll have an epic scientific burn. So the next question that we might have is uh, how do we measure volume or how do we know that the measurement that we are looking at or reading about is a volume? In the metric system, we use the liter. The liter is our base unit. To it, we can add the prefix kilo, which means 1,000, and that tells us that we're measuring large objects with kiloliters. We can also put a milli on the front. Milli means a uh, thousandth, so that's our little unit with milliliters. Kiloliters are used to measure big things like swimming pools and oceans. We're not going to see that one very much. Uh, liters are used to measure things like you know, the gasoline for your car. You know you love my awesome hat car. Um, we also buy sodas in two liters. So if you have a question on how much a liter is, you know, it's a half of a two liter. And then milliliters is the one we're going to see the most often. That's what we use for soda, medicine. Um, we, we see that one the most commonly in what we buy and what we're going to see in science class. So our tool is the graduated cylinder. And you might be asking yourself, how do I use a graduated cylinder? I'm going to tell you in a minute. It's called the graduated cylinder because it has lines, graduations, and it's in the shape of a cylinder. Now we need to learn how to use a graduated cylinder. So a graduated cylinder is called that because it's obviously a cylinder. And then on its front, it has markings that increase in value called graduations. So step one, we need to pour our liquid into the container. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this part's pretty easy. This tool is actually pretty friendly to use. So I'm gonna pull it up here so that you guys can uh, have a little look-see at what it looks like when we pour the liquid into the container. Step two, we need to get on eye level. We don't want to read this from way up high or way down low. We want to be on eye level with our water. So let's see if I can get you on eye level with the camera. Okay. So if you can see here, boop. okay, we're between 50 and 60 and we're about uh, two little slashy marks below the 60. We always on a graduated cylinder read two the bottom of the meniscus because if we read to the top of the curve that happens it's an optical illusion that the water starts climbing up onto the sides of the container if we read to the top we get an inaccurate reading that actually makes it appear as if we're one milliliter more than it should be so in this case we would record that we have 59 milliliters and on our data table, we would record to the nearest one milliliter, uh, 59 milliliters. There's no decimal places on these guys, so uh, they're pretty friendly and easy to use. So how do we measure the volume of an irregular solid? If something is a liquid, it's super easy to figure out how to pour it in the graduated cylinder and read it. If something is a solid, it gets a little bit more difficult. In math, you learned about length times width times height and all of your crazy formulas. But in science, we like to use you guessed it, displacement. Dun, dun, dun. So Archimedes is going to hang out with us here today. 
because he's the guy that figured out that displacement is awesome. So how do we do this displacement thing? The idea is that when we put an object in water, it moves the water the same amount as the um, space that it takes up. So step one, we gotta fill our graduated cylinder with water and we gotta do so with enough water to cover the solid without overflowing. So if I filled it all the way to the top, then we're not gonna be able to get a reading. If I put just a little bit in, then we're not gonna be able to cover this solid. So right here, we know that our solid is gonna be able to go in and still have enough room to be able to move. So the height of our water alone is 59 milliliters, which we just saw in our last video. So we're going to measure our initial height, 59 milliliters reading to the bottom of the curve. Step three, we gotta keep track of that number two. So you're gonna have to like jot that down somewhere um, when you do your um, experiments. Then we're going to place, not drop like a cannonball, but place the object in the water because we don't want the water to dip out. And if you'll notice, we were at 59 and now the level of the water has gone up because the object is in here and the water is in here. So they occupy more space than the water itself did. So now we look like we're at about 64 milliliters. So the last step that we have to do is a little bit of subtraction. You can thank Archimedes for that. We need to take the volume of the water plus the object, which right now is at 64, and then subtract the initial amount of water because we don't wanna know the water plus the object, we wanna know just how much space the object is taking up. So we're gonna subtract the 59 milliliters of the water and we are going to record on our data table that the object has a volume of five milliliters. That is how we find the volume by do, 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 la, 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 la. displacement. Thanks Archimedes.